legacy? Well, it will solidify the idea that LeBron James is a mercenary and a title chaser. Um, I think it's, it's good to be very specific here. I think what's best for LeBron's legacy is to stay in Cleveland. Fellas, I believe that for many of us out there, sports is about, you know, being tied to a location. It's about being a legend. It's about, it's about leaving a legacy behind at a certain location. Who carries your torch when it's all said and done? You know, when it's all said and done, Los Angeles carries the torch for Magic Johnson. Los Angeles carries the torch for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Dallas will carry the torch for Dirk Nowitzki. San Antonio will do so for, for Tim Duncan. Having that place where they erect your statues, where long after you're gone, they talk about you and they champion you and they debate on your behalf. I think that's what sports is about. Ultimately, it's like little city states that compete in war and battle against each other. And LeBron still has a claim there. He has a stake in the city of Cleveland. Trust me, every time you offer up the slightest bit of criticism of LeBron James, the entire city of Cle Cleveland comes after you. He still has some of that. And if he leaves, he will be... He will solidify the image of himself as a mercenary. Miami, the move to Miami began that image process. If he does it again, that's the risk that, he, uh, that he'll take on, that he is simply a title-chasing mercenary. I will say this, staying in Cleveland obviously comes at a cost. Stephen A., I heard you earlier, the cost that it comes with is the number three and seven, or the number three and eight. It's his finals record appearances, and that's the cost. But the benefit is you own Cleveland. When I think about the legacy of LeBron James and I contemplate how it would look if he were to depart, the negativity that would emanate from his departure is solely because of him. And here's what I mean by that. When he decided to return back to Cleveland, let's remember what he said. He talked about coming home. He didn't just talk about coming home to capture a championship for the city of Cleveland that had escaped them for a half century at the time. He talked about coming home because of loved ones. He talked about coming home because of the community, of the lives he impacted, and he wanted to impact. Those are the kind of things that he talked about. So what he said was it's bigger than basketball. It transcended the sport of basketball. It was so much bigger than that. It was about him being home and surrounded by family. And by family, I don't mean just literal family. I mean all the loved ones that came with it, the community at large, because of what he meant and what he means to that area. So in that regard, that's where the negativity would emanate from. Because folks would say, well, what happened to that? You know, whether your relationship with Dan Gilbert is the greatest or not, whether you're winning championships or not, you know, this is still your community. Northeast Ohio, this is still where you're from. This is still who we are. And so if that's the reason that you came back to begin with, why are you leaving again? That's the only thing that would tarnish or smear his legacy in any way. The fact that he's already won a championship in Cleveland, I think he's fulfilled his end of the bargain. I don't think that he owes that area anything. I think that his philanthropy in that area, particularly in the city of Akron, is unquestionable, as USA Today highlighted yesterday. I don't think there's any issue with that at all. It's just that the words that you articulated upon your return, are you consistent and is your behavior consistent with the level of emotion and feelings of loyalty that you expressed at that particular moment in time. If there's anything to hold him accountable for, that would be it. But I think that would be all. I want to address what you said, Will, because I find it interesting, in, in, and, and, then, and then I want to get to his legacy. You, said, you mentioned city-states, how, and I've always thought of sports that way. You know, it's not as though New York's going to look to sack Boston, right? This is, we're not ancient Greece. But it is something like our teams are, you know, surrogates for that. And we say, look, this represents this area, that represents that area. It's the reason I'm against salary caps, generally. There are differences in locations. And if, if everything is completely homogenous, then essentially every team's the same. And as you saw LeBron's jersey burning, we're just rooting for laundry, really. What difference does it make? How does it take on the character of the town? LeBron in Cleveland does take on the character of the town or represent Cleveland in a certain way because he's from Akron, because that's where he happened to be drafted, because that's where he chose to return and deliver a championship. So there's a deeper-rooted sense of, of um, 
ownership of each other, the town of LeBron and LeBron of the town. But I think LeBron's legacy extends past just Cleveland. I think LeBron's real legacy is the empowerment of the player, of the athlete. You think about it like... Joe DiMaggio was once asked, the great Yankee center fielder, after Reggie Jackson, I think it was, got a big contract back in the day in the late 70s. It was $3 million over five years, and no one could believe how much money that was. Hey, Joe, what would you have gotten if you played today? He said he would have walked into Steinbrenner's office, the owner of the Yankees at the time, and said, hey, partner, right? Oscar De La Hoya, the boxing champion, Floyd Mayweather after him, used their status as leverage. Hey, you want me to fight on your network? You need to give my promotional companies, your network does, a certain number of dates for my fighters, and thereby built his stable up. Empowering, Joe DiMaggio was talking about empowering himself as a player with a lot of leverage. Oscar De La Hoya and later Floyd Mayweather actually empowered themselves because they understood what they meant in the marketplace. And that's what LeBron James has demonstrated through his, throughout his career. He is not beholden to any owner, quote unquote, or general manager, or even town. He can take his destiny into to his own hands. He's shown athletes, powerful athletes, that they can use their power not only to build their own brand, but really to take a greater degree of control of their own athletic destiny. Recall, LeBron was in Cleveland originally. They wouldn't trade for Amari Stoudemire, let alone a truly great player to give him help. He took matters into his own hands. He went to Miami. Miami started getting a little old. He hopped back to Cleveland because they had enough talent. If he makes another move, for every single person who cries about the fact that he's chasing rings and everything else, there are players watching, like Kevin Durant, whether we like it or not, who, sit, who think to themselves, doesn't matter what the media says, yeah, but doesn't matter how this is perceived in the short run, I'm going to control my own destiny. Max, and when you're talking about legacy, legacy, when you're talking about legacy, though, I don't think that's defined by fellow players. Honestly, that's defined by fans and how fans view your career. And I'll tell you this, one thing I agree with you on is at this point, LeBron James is bigger than the city of Cleveland. He's bigger than the Cleveland Cavaliers. The only other player, honestly, that's ever achieved that kind of status that I can think of is my Michael Jordan. So let's just, there, so to me, there's only one brand big enough to justify a LeBron James move. If he goes to Houston or San Antonio, like both of you mentioned in, in title chases, the truth is we're all going to discount those. We, you know, we're, gonna, we're never going to compare the rings he wins in Houston, San Antonio to the six that Jordan won in Chicago. J Jordan is bigger than Chicago. It was all done for and with and in Chicago. So the only brand that I think LeBron James can use to overcome the idea that he's a mercenary and his titles are discounted is the Los Angeles Lakers. The Los Angeles Lakers are so big. They are not an easy title chase away. He's not the one player that makes them a title champion. That, that, that's the only brand that I think LeBron can move to. What about to. Miami? He's already been there. I was going to say Miami. But you're not going to win a title in, in Miami. That's no, 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 no. It's if he were to do that, would your theory apply? Yeah. Then he'd have this split legacy between Cleveland and Miami? No, I don't think so. I mean... Miami's it does address his mercurial reputation, Will, if he just goes Miami, Like he's Cleveland. got two wives instead yeah, of one? Of... <laughs> I mean, no, I, I mean, if, if you move one more time, you just, loyalty is gone. You're just bigger than loyalty. So you're just looking for the biggest tripoline, the biggest brand, the biggest marketing vehicle that, that is worthy of the LeBron James legacy. That's all you're looking for. Loyalty is gone. Okay. Is your gut he stays? Uh, yeah. All right, you can marinate uh, on that. Uh, Will, I put you on the spot for another time, okay? No, I think he goes. All right. We, I'll put you I'm not afraid. He we'll goes. hear you on uh, radio Lakers? a little later. Three, just no, goes. No, said whether he, his gut, whether he stays or not. 3 to 6 Eastern, yes, ESPN Radio, ESPN News, Will Kane Show. I'm with it. Good See you then.